Well, I was serving in the Convocation of Episcopal Churches in Europe. I was living in Rome, uh, teaching there, and I was involved with the American Academy in Rome and the Episcopal Church in Rome. And uh, my five years in Rome was coming to an end, so I was thinking about what am I going to do? My wife, Carmela, is a professor at Columbia University. She needed to go back to Columbia. And I'd been very active in the convocation, and some members of the convocation nominated me as Bishop of, of Western New York. And in fact, my wife, who was born in Italy, her parents had moved to Buffalo when they were tired, believe it or not. They didn't want to go to a warm place. <laughs> they had already been in one. And so, um, I knew Buffalo, I knew the city, I knew the cathedral uh, over long periods of time. And as an academic, my field of study had been the church in industrial cities, believe it or not, and how the church had uh, reacted to change in industrial cities. So one day I came back from celebrating the Eucharist and preaching at St. Paul's Church in Rome, and the profile was lying on the couch in our living room in Rome, and I just picked it up, and I started reading it, and immediately I saw myself in that profile. Industrial city, region, facing change, facing challenge, wanting uh, someone who would have a vision of leading them forward in the midst of a lot of serious challenges. It was just like a piece of lightning went to me. I, I can do this. At every, t at every interview, at every conversation, again, this vision came back to me. I think I know what the problems are to a certain extent. I feel that this is a wonderful challenge. I would like to do some new things. And I had that sense from the beginning. And so I went through the election process and I, and I was elected. And I gave great thanks for that. And so what I have seen is um, kind of a classic example of the challenge to the Episcopal Church of the 21st century. So I realized we cannot do things the way they've done before. And so what I said is that the bishop and the bishop's staff, above all, need to be present in the parishes, understanding the parishes, serving the parishes, serving the needs of the parishes. And the second thing I had I said is that we are one community. The parishes make up our primary community as a whole. And I use the term the web of grace to describe this link. The web of grace meaning that all boats rise together. And we couldn't have four big churches thriving while 50 little churches went out of business. That would destroy our community. The thing that is important to remember about me, who's saying we've got to change, we've got to do things differently, is I'm a historian by profession. I love the old church. I've spent my life teaching about and writing about the Episcopal Church as it was. So perhaps because of that, I gained this insight that <laughs> there's always been change. And so part of my episcopate has always, from the moment I, when I was standing for bishop, is to try to be honest about the challenges we face and never pull any punches about there's going to be no Episcopal Church here if we don't work together to find a way to articulate our mission for this moment. We met because we were both elected by the House of Bishops to the General Board of Examining Chaplains. And we found ourselves at the Canuga Conference Center in 2013 uh, reading the general ordination exams, which is like the bar exam for our church. And that began a conversation in the dining room at Canuga about, well, what's the future? And by the way, we're neighbors. And by the way, we're, we're having some of the same challenges. And by the way, our culture is somewhat sick. What are you doing? He started talking about what he was doing. And he said, Bill, what are you doing? And so this is a very unusual thing because here was a young guy, and an old guy, me, who were having exactly the same ideas about uh, how we might go forward. 
which means that we go forward with already a foundation of a similar plans about the future with a leader, a bishop, Sean Rowe, who knows the region, who's from the region, who understands the good and the bad and the ugly about <laughs> the Great Lake region, and is able then to build on what's been done before and go forward. But, yes, I wouldn't mind having a legacy. And if this is it, I would be very happy about that.